Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever see a puppy who needs to be adopted or a homeless dog? Yes, sometimes you do. Well, Arfie is homeless. So he's decided to write letters to people asking if he can be their dog. He's hoping to talk someone into wanting him. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Arfi can get anyone to say yes. Can I Be Your Dog? by Troy Cummings. Dear people at Yellow House, Woof! Can I be your dog? I am potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. Also, I love to play. I see you have a cat, but I'm willing to work with you. Who's a good dog? I am! Sincerely, Arfie. P.S. I know every house on Butternut Street, but I asked you first. Dear Arfie, we're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is, um, allergic to dogs. Good luck in your search. The Honeywells. Dear Butcher Lady, can I be your dog? I think your butcher shop would be a great place for a puppy like me. I could keep the floor nice and clean. Arfie. Look, pal, I've got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. Veronica Shank, Butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dried giblets and good luck finding a home. Nom, nom, nom. Dear Fire Station number five, can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say I know my way around a fire hydrant. I've sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street. And yours is the shiniest. Arfie. Dear applicant, thank you for your interest in working with the Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of fire dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes in your search. Station number five. Dear junkyard guy, I'm not gonna lie, you're my next to last choice. But these past few days have been rough. Rough, rough, rough. So please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much, and I can bark if people try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours, Arfi. Dear Mutt, get lost. Dear last house on Butternut Street, 
Can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds and your windows are broken and there's a funny smell. But I'm not picky, just lonely. Arfie. Return to sender. Nobody at this address. To Arfi. Dear Arfi, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first-class partner. With hugs and head scratches, Mitzi Whipple, letter carrier. P.S. If you agree, meet me at the big blue mailbox. Hmm. Dear Mitzi, you know what? My tail has been wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes! Truly yours, Arfi. P.S. Woof! Scritch, scratch. Bear's wondering. Do you think Arfi is the right dog for a letter carrier? Some are saying yes. Arfi can even read the envelopes, Bear. Well, do you think Arfi will get enough walks? Many yeses. Bear's asking, someday would you maybe adopt a homeless animal? Hmm. Bear is also hoping you come back soon for more adventures with our animal friends. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever heard of an alphabet tree? <laughs> no? Well, Bear says he can take you to an alphabet tree where letters live on branches. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if the letters can find a way to keep from blowing away when the winds come. The Alphabet Tree by Leo Leone. This is the alphabet tree, said the ant. Why is it called the alphabet tree? asked his friend. Because not so long ago, this tree was full of letters. They lived a happy life, hopping from leaf to leaf on the highest twigs. Each letter had its favorite leaf, where it would sit in the sun and rock in the gentle breeze of spring. One day the breeze became a strong gust, and the gust became a gale. 
The letters clung to the leaves with all their might, but some were blown away, and the others were very frightened. When the storm had passed, they huddled together in fear, deep in the foliage of the lower branches. A funny bug, red and black with bright yellow wings, saw them there, hiding in the shade. We are hiding from the wind, the letters explained. But who are you? I am the word bug, the bug answered. I can teach you to make words. If you get together in threes and fours, and even more, no wind will be strong enough to blow you away. Patiently, he taught the letters to join together and make words. Some made short and easy words like dog and cat. Others learned to make more difficult ones. Twig, leaf, and even earth. Happily, they climbed back onto the highest leaves, and when the wind came, they held on without fear. The word bug had been right. Then one summer morning, a strange caterpillar appeared amid the foliage. He was purple, woolly, and very large. Such confusion, said the caterpillar when he saw the words scattered around the leaves. Why don't you get together and make sentences and mean something? The letters had never thought of this. Now they could really write, say things. They said things about the wind, the leaves, the bug. The wind is bad. Leaves are green. The bug is small. Good, said the caterpillar approvingly, but not good enough. Why, asked the letters surprised. Because you must say something important, said the caterpillar. The letters tried to think of something important, really important. Finally, they knew what to say. What could be more important than peace? Peace on earth and goodwill toward all men, they spelled excitedly. Great, said the caterpillar. Now climb onto my back. One by one, the letters climbed onto the woolly back. But where are you taking us? They asked anxiously as the caterpillar began climbing down the tree. To the president, said the caterpillar. Bear's wondering, do you think words like peace and goodwill toward all are important? Many are saying yes. Well, Bear hopes fighting will stop and that you help bring peace with your kind words, too. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in finding the right words. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever wish you could build a tree house up high in your favorite tree? Lots of yeses, Bear. Hmm, would you invite your friends to play in it? Yes? 
Well, Pete the cat is building a tree house right now, and he's inviting all of his friends over. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Pete and his friends will have a tree house party. Pete the Cat and the Tip Top Tree House by James Dean. Pete the Cat has built a tree house. He calls his friends. I just built a tree house, he says. Come over to play. Pete's friends show up. This is great, say his friends. But it is a little small. You are right, says Pete. It is too small. I will fix that. Pete starts building a bigger tree house. Do you want some help? asks Callie. Sure, says Pete. Callie carries up more wood. Can I help too? asks Marty. Sure, says Pete. Together, they build a tower for Pete's tree house. Let's have a tree house party, says Marty. A party, says Pete. But what will everyone do? I can help with that, says Emma. This is great, says Pete. Let's do it. Pete, Marty, Callie, Emma, and Grumpy Toad get right to work. They build an arcade. They fill it with fun games. They build a bowling alley. It has 20 lanes. They build a wave pool. Pete can surf indoors. They build a movie theater and a skate park and a climbing wall and an ice rink. Pete's friends all come for the party. Pete takes one friend to the bowling alley. He takes one friend to the movie theater. Pete takes one friend to the skate park. Pete lets one friend surf in the wave pool. Is everyone here? asks Pete. Yeah, but we're all alone, his friends say. We came to play with each other. Oh, says Pete. Everyone, meet down at the jungle gym. Everyone climbs down. This tree house is amazing, say his friends. Thanks, says Pete. I'm so glad it brought us all together. Here's wondering. Do you think Pete and his friends had fun planning amazing things to build? Yes. Do you also think they all enjoyed working hard? Yes. Bear's also asking, do you think good friends can always find ways to have fun? Well, 
Bear hopes you come back soon for more fun adventures in friends, bringing friends together. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Can you imagine forgetting about Christmas? Many say no, Bear. Well, if no one remembered Christmas anymore, would you try to bring Christmas back? Yes, you'd try. Well, these three best friends want to figure out who or what made Christmas stop. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if they can bring Christmas back. Forgotten Christmas by Ash Gilpin. Imagine for a moment a time without holiday cheer. No carolers or gifts to ring in the new year. A time to be with kith and kin, forgotten those days of kindred celebration. It wasn't until a cold December day when three best of friends got together to play. They happened upon an old broken down shack Remains of a secret still kept intact. It was as if they had walked into another time, back when carolers sang and jingle bells chimed. A spectacle of lights and decorations filled the room. Eggnog and candy canes left out to consume. Earmuff to earmuff, they stood wide in wonder, frozen in speech from the spell they were under. It was there they decided to make a pact, to do whatever they could to bring this holiday back. But before they could set out on such an endeavor, they had to know whoever, whatever, ended this holiday forever. And who better to ask than old Mrs. Marley? She was, after all, the wisest by and largely. Together they rode to her house on the shore. They walked up her front steps and knocked on the door. What do you want? A raspy voice came roaring. We need to know about Christmas, they replied. Hearts all imploring. Without further ado, the door promptly came open. Hurry, come inside. It's freezing. You must be frozen. Now, how did you hear of this holiday name? It was Timmy. He did it. He's the one to blame. Now gather round. Come closer. I have for you a story about a little boy named Willie and his unwavering desire for glory. Christmas was indeed Willie's favorite time of year. He'd set out milk and cookies and wait for the sound of eight tiny reindeer. He wanted nothing more than to be an elf in Santa's shop to laugh and dance and make toys all day while drinking Santa's pop. Each year he'd write a letter to Big Red himself about the ideas he had for Christmas and why he should be an elf. But each year the response came back the same. We thank you for your interest. Please try back again. As you can imagine, this rocked Willie to his core. Willie threw away the letters. 
He wanted so much more. I'll go up to the North Pole and take one of Santa's trees. He'll never know it's missing. I'll return it before he leaves. I'll use its magical powers to make gifts for girls and boys. I'll prove myself to Santa with my inventions of mechanized toys. But Willie's plan had a folly for which he was soon to become aware. Taking that tree from Santa Claus had repercussions he couldn't bear. For little did he know he broke the source of all its power. The absence of its siblings left it wilted like a flower. But this was just the start of an event like no other. The other trees in Christmas land began to wilt like one another. Without the magic of the trees to give power to Santa's shop, Christmas as we knew it came halting to a stop. What have I done, Willie thought to himself. I've ruined Christmas for everyone. I'm not worthy to be an elf. And so Willie, in all his disgrace and shame, ran away forever until time forgot his name. Winters came and went and Christmas soon was lost. The fleeting memories of joyous times melted away like winter's frost. Now it's been said that the return of the tree would undo what's been done. But until that day reveals itself, there'll be no Christmas for you, for me, for anyone. So where do we go? What do we do? How do we make this oppression end? Search your feelings, you know the answer. Just look to your friend. She's right, you know. Yes, of course. The answer is right in front of us. We'll find the tree that Willie took and return it to St. Nicholas. So they set off on a mission to find Santa's missing tree. Days and weeks and months went by before they stumbled upon what just might be a letter, a clue from Willie addressed to Santa Claus himself. I'm sorry I stole your Christmas tree. I'll never be able to forgive myself. But this letter postmarked to Santa was stamped, Return to Sender. If only Santa had received this note, imagine all that he could render. The return address on the envelope gave the boys much needed direction. It led them back to the shack where they first found purpose and introspection. Returning to the shack, you see, had resulted in more than they had expected. For what at first had gone undetected, the moonlight's glow now projected. Could it be? I think it could. The man who ended Christmas. Yes, of course, I'm sure it is. That's Willie there in the distance. The boys confronted Willie and explained their very plight about the tree he took from Santa, leaving Christmas without light. Yes, I know, I've let you down. I've brought such joyous things to end. One could tell right away what Willie needed was a friend. But Willie, what you don't know about that letter you sent up north, it got marked return to sender and got lost in the back and forth. You mean Santa never read my letter? He never knew of my regret? That's exactly what we're saying and why it's so important we correct. Come with me, my new friends, and I will take you to the tree, the one I took 
all those years ago when I was so young and naive. And so they followed Willie down a dark and winding trail until they came upon a sight of sights. They had finally reached their grail. It was just as Mrs. Marley described it, a tree so frail and weak. Perhaps if we just put it in water, Timmy murmured, tongue in cheek. But this was not a time for joking. Time was of the essence. Let's get this tree back to Santa so he can return to making presents. And so they traveled for many a day back to where it had all started, back to Santa's shop in Christmas land, its location left uncharted. But what they had returned to with their mission so absolute was a land time had forgotten, one oh so cold and destitute. Willie's eyes began to water seeing all that he had caused. Hang in there, buddy. We're almost there, Timmy shouted as Willie paused. Coming in hot, their sleigh malfunctioned and into Santa's shop it struck. There he is. I see him. Here I go now. Wish me luck. Hello, Santa. Willie here. I'm the one who took your tree. All those many years ago when I was foolish and naive. Willie, my boy, ho, oh, ho, I know you've harbored such regret. Christmas is a time for peace on earth, goodwill toward men, a time to forgive and forget. So all those years of Willie's fear of how Santa would react, the true meaning of Christmas no one could detract. Together they planted that faded tree, restoring magic, power, and light. And to all the children of the world, Merry Christmas and good night. Bear's wondering, do you think Willie is on Santa's naughty list? Most say no, Bear. <laughs> well, Bear's asking, why do you think Willie's on Santa's nice list? Hmm, if you were Santa, would you forgive Willie? Well, Bear hopes that he will stay on Santa's nice list when he is truly sorry. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in being extra kind to others for Christmas. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever heard a sound you did not like? A few times? Well, Huda the Bear only likes the quiet sounds he hears every day in the woods. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what Cuda will do now that new neighbors are making loud sounds in his quiet woods. Rock and Roll Woods by Sherry Howard. Cuda woke up from a very long sleep. He loved the soft sounds of his neighborhood. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The stream gurgled. Cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. The birds chirped. 
Swish, swish, swish. The forest floor rustled. Boom, wappa wappa. Cuta set off on his daily walk. What was that? He clamped his paws over his ears. What was that awful noise? Boom, wappa wappa, boom, wappa wappa, boom, boom, boom. What's the racket? Cuta asked. Rabbit's foot thumpity thumped to the beat. We have new neighbors. Cuta groaned. <sighs> new loud noises and new neighbors. Boom, wappa wappa, boom, wappa wappa, boom, boom, boom. I don't like it, grumbled Cuta. It's too loud. You'll feel better after you eat. Rabbit led Cuta to the water. While Cuta ate, Rabbit bounced to the rhythm of the music. Cuta had never seen him so happy, hopping all around. Cuta almost swished his behind along to the tune. But then he remembered he didn't like new noises. What do you think of the new racket? Cuta asked. Surely Al didn't like these new sounds. Ooh, me? Al's head bobbed again on a boom, boom, boom. Squirrel scampered past, shaking his bushy tail to the beat. Come on, join the fun! I don't like it, grumbled Cuta. It's too loud. I can't hear the stream or the birds or even think. Cuta tramped back to his cave, leaving Rabbit confused. How can anyone not like the music? Rabbit wondered. Boom, wappa wappa. Cuta covered his head. Cuta found his earmuffs and scarf. Boom, wappa wappa. Then he added layers and layers and more layers. Boom, wappa wappa. Cuta spotted a note and read it. Please join our rock and roll celebration in the community cabin. He sniffled. Tired of being alone, Cuta headed off to see what all the fuss was about. Boom, wappa wappa. As Cuta got closer and closer, the music got louder and louder. He peeked inside. And that's when he saw his friends dancing to the boom, wappa, wappa, boom, wappa, wappa, boom, boom, boom. They swirled and twirled, dipped and dropped, clapped and stomped. Cuta felt the sounds thumping in his chest. Boom, boom, boom. He felt his paws pick up sticks and beat time on a fallen log. Boom, wappa, wappa. It was as if his body had a mind of its own. Strange, his ears didn't hurt so much. Maybe the new noise wasn't so bad. That drum looked more fun than sticks on a log. Cuta wanted to be with his friends. Maybe he'd go in.
just for a few minutes. When Cuta finally opened the door, his friends cheered. Was that you on the wood outside? The new neighbor asked. She motioned Cuta to sit at the drums and pound a beat. Cuta quickly found his rhythm. Bam, 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 Wapa kazoo. Owl chimed in. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Rabbit thumpity thumped. Old and new friends jammed together. After the party ended, Cuda ambled back to his cave. Rabbit hopped alongside him. Wasn't that fun? You learned the drums. Cuda hated to admit that he liked the new noises in his woods. It was okay. Our new neighbors are so fun, Rabbit said. I can't wait until the next party. They're okay, said Cuda. Guess I could get used to a rock and roll woods. Swish, swish, swish. The forest floor rustled as the old friends returned home. Bear's wondering, why do you think Cuda might like a rock and roll woods? Well, some say when he tried the drums, Cuda liked making some new loud sounds. Hmm. Bear's also wondering if you think Rabbit and Cuda will start a rock band with all their old and new friends. Maybe so? Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in giving new ideas a try. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here. It's story time with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever wish you could eat sweet treats all the time? Yes, some say they'd like to eat cookies and ice cream all day and night, Bear. Well, Cammy Kangaroo loves sweets too. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what will happen if Cammy decides to eat all the yummy cookies in her house when no one's looking. Cammy Kangaroo has too many sweets by Stacy Bauer. All was calm in the kangaroo house. Mommy was putting baby Wyatt down for a nap while Cammy Kangaroo was having quiet time in her room. At least she was supposed to be having quiet time. Instead, Cammy's brain was buzzing. She could not stop thinking about treats. Candy, cake, Cookies, ice cream. Cammy loved them all. She knew a great place to find treats at her house. The freezer drawer. Cammy hopped down the stairs and over to the freezer, grabbed the handle and pulled it open. After placing the ice cream into her pouch, Cammy Kangaroo hopped quickly to the playroom and locked the door behind her. Cammy Kangaroo scooped out a little of the ice cream and
stuck her paws into her mouth. It was the best ice cream she had ever tasted. She lost track of time as she tried more and more of that delicious ice cream. Cammy, her mommy called. Cammy froze. The playroom door rattled and slowly opened. Mommy sighed and said, Come here, Cammy. We need to have a little talk. Cammy, it's not okay to sneak treats, Mommy Kangaroo said. Treats have sugar and can cause cavities. You have a dentist appointment coming up. Next time you want a treat, you need to ask Mommy or Daddy first. Do you understand? Cammy nodded. But the very next day when Mommy took Wyatt upstairs for a nap, Cammy started thinking about treats again. She quietly made her way back to the freezer drawer. But this time it wouldn't open no matter how hard she pulled. She hopped into the pantry searching for more goodies. The top shelf! That's where more treats were hidden. After Mommy caught Cammy eating sprinkles in the playroom, she removed the lock from the playroom door and put it on the pantry door. Cammy still didn't give up. She found the cupcakes that were hidden on top of the refrigerator and licked off the frosting. Then she ate Daddy's secret stash of chocolate bars that were in the drawer next to his bed and hid the wrappers behind her dresser. She even found the pan of brownies Mommy hid in the microwave. Every day, Cammy found some way to sneak a treat. Soon after, it was time for her dentist appointment. Cammy sat in the big dentist chair. After the hygienist cleaned and flossed her teeth, the dentist came in to take a look. The dentist said to Mommy, Well, I'm afraid she has four cavities. Cammy, do you brush and floss your teeth every day? Cammy nodded. Have you been sneaking treats again? Mommy asked. Cammy didn't say anything. Cammy, it's very important that you listen to your parents about treats so you don't get any more cavities, said the dentist. I'm going to let you choose a new toothbrush and some floss. Do you think you can stop sneaking treats? Cammy nodded and said, I'm sorry, Mommy. Mommy gave her a hug. The dentist let her pick out a new toothbrush and some floss. Then Cammy and Mommy Kangaroo headed home. When they got home, Cammy bounded quickly into the house to tell Daddy about the dentist. She caught him and Wyatt sitting on the couch with a big bowl of ice cream. Mommy laughed. <laughs> I think it's safe to say this whole family has had too many sweets. It's time to change our habits. Let's start with a healthy dinner. Bear's wondering, 
do you think Cammie wants to stop sneaking sweets? <laughs> Many say yes. She said she was sorry, Bear. Well, Bear is also asking, who else needs to eat less sugar? Bear thinks her dad does, too. Hmm, who will Cammie need to help her keep eating healthier food? If you said her dad and mom, Bear agrees with you. <laughs> Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in families who make good choices together. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever hear parents or teachers say, use your words? Sometimes? Well, Frederick the Mouse likes to use his words, especially when things get hard sometimes or boring. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Frederick can use his words to help the other mice. Frederick by Leo Leone All along the meadow where the cows grazed and the horses ran, there was an old stone wall. In that wall, not far from the barn and the granary, a chatty family of field mice had their home. But the farmers had moved away. The barn was abandoned, and the granary stood empty. And since winter was not far off, the little mice began to gather corn and nuts and wheat and straw. They all worked day and night, all except Frederick. Frederick, why don't you work? they asked. I do work, said Frederick. I gather sun rays for the cold, dark winter days. And when they saw Frederick sitting there, staring at the meadow, they said, And now, Frederick? I gather colors, answered Frederick simply, for winter is gray. And once Frederick seemed half asleep. Are you dreaming, Frederick? they asked reproachfully. Frederick said, Oh no, I am gathering words. For the winter days are long and many, and we'll run out of things to say. The winter days came, and when the first snow fell, the five little field mice took to their hideout in the stones. In the beginning, there was lots to eat, and the mice told stories of foolish foxes and silly cats. They were a happy family. But little by little, they had nibbled up most of the nuts and berries. The straw was gone, and the corn was only a memory. It was cold in the wall and no one felt like chatting. Then they remembered what Frederick had said about sun rays and colors and words. What about your supplies, Frederick? They asked.
Close your eyes, said Frederick, as he climbed on a big stone. Now I send you the rays of the sun. Do you feel how their golden glow? And as Frederick spoke of the sun, the four little mice began to feel warmer. Was it Frederick's voice? Was it magic? And how about the colors, Frederick? They asked anxiously. Close your eyes again, Frederick said. And when he told them of the blue periwinkles, the red poppies in the yellow wheat, and the green leaves of the berry bush, they saw the colors as clearly as if they had been painted in their minds. And the words, Frederick? Frederick cleared his throat, <clears throat> waited a moment, and then said, as if from a stage, he said, Who scatters snowflakes? Who melts the ice? Who spoils the weather? Who makes it nice? Who grows the four-leaf clovers in June? Who dims the daylight? Who lights the moon? Four little field mice who live in the sky. Four little field mice like you and I. One is the spring mouse who turns on the showers. Then comes the summer who paints in the flowers. The fall mouse is next with walnuts and wheat. And winter is last, with little cold feet. Aren't we lucky the seasons are four? Think of a year with one less, or one more. When Frederick had finished, they all applauded. But Frederick, they said, you are a poet. Frederick blushed, took a bow, and said shyly, I know it. Bears wondering, do you think Frederick's words helped the other mice? Yes? Well, Bear's also asking, do you really think Frederick's words helped them feel warm? Think about happy colors? and maybe even talk about the ideas in his poem? Many do, Bear. Hmm, do you think you can collect words that could help others feel better? Well, Bear hopes you will, and that you come back soon for more adventures in using your words to help others. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever had an unlucky day when things do not go your way? Yes, many have, Bear. <laughs> well, Monkey and Duck are having a very unlucky day. In fact, it looks like they might even crash into each other. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what it takes for Monkey and Duck to get some luck. Monkey and Duck Find Some Luck by Donna and John Curtin Jr. Hi, my name is Monkey and I want to tell you a story about how I met my best friend, 
duck. One day, Monkey was walking in the park when suddenly a duck came flying out of nowhere over Monkey's head and almost hit him. Crash! Slam! Monkey rushed over to see if Duck was okay. He said he was okay, but he hurt his leg and he needed a doctor. So, Monkey started to think about what he should do next. Monkey then said, I have an idea. They tried to hobble to get to the doctor. After a few minutes, they realized that hobbling was not going to work. Duck then had an idea. Duck said, we can fly! So Monkey held on to Duck's good foot. But suddenly... Crash! After seeing stars, Monkey noticed he hurt his arm. He saw a wagon and said, Wait, we can use that wagon. The only problem is I cannot steer it because of my hurt arm. So Duck said, I will steer it because my wings are not hurt. It was working fine at first. However, as they went downhill and started to gain speed, the steering stick suddenly came off. They were headed right towards the pond. Oh no, said Duck, and the wagon crashed into the pond. Monkey said, Okay, I think we need to ask someone for help. They both went up to the first person they saw and asked for help. The person replied, I cannot help you because I am a clown and I need to balance my plate. Then they went up to another person looking for help, and this person said to them, I cannot help you because I am a ballerina and I need to stay on my toes. They saw another person and asked if he could help them, and this person said, Of course, I am a doctor. After getting all fixed up at the doctor's office, Duck said, Today has been a very lucky day. Monkey said, What are you talking about? We both hurt ourselves. Duck said, Because I met my new best friend. And that's the story of how I met my best friend, Duck. The End Bear's wondering, did you see some tears just now in Monkey's and Duck's eyes? Some noticed their tears, Bear. Hmm, were those sad tears or happy tears, Bear? Well, Bear says Monkey and Bear stuck together as they went through a lot of hard things. Do you agree? 
do you think that's why they became best friends? Well, Bear is happy they are sticking together. And he also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in making friends. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever wish you could choose a puppy to pick up and take home with you? Wow, lots of yeses, Bear. Well, today is puppy pickup day for this little Labradoodle. He can't wait to meet his new family. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if he is the kind of puppy you would want to take home. Puppy Pickup Day by April Cox. Today is the day. Wake up. Wake up. Today is the day, barked the littlest pup. Seven more puppies jumped from their beds as the little one yelled, Wake up, sleepy heads! Primping and fussing with hairbrush and comb, today all the puppies will get a new home. So eager and happy they ran off to play, excited and ready for their big day. When two of the doodles played tug with a rope, for the littlest pup, there wasn't much hope. When the others could jump, catching balls just for fun, the littlest pup couldn't catch even one. You're too small, the other doodles cried, as with a big thump. He fell off the slide. He sighed and he plopped himself under a tree, saw rabbits and said, Hey, you're little like me. Joining the bunnies, he ran and he raced. He wasn't too small to play tag and be chased. Under bushes and trees, over bridges they crossed. Then little pup yelped, Oh no, I am lost. I must get back, I cannot stay. Today is puppy pickup day. In the meantime, some families began to arrive. They each picked up doodles, and then there were five. Aunt Nola Doodle said goodbye to each one as she patted their heads a few times, just for fun. Hello, said the puppy to Evie the cat. I have run a long way. How do I get back? Through the tall grass, she said, over the hill. Find a small stream and a bullfrog named Bill. He walked by the water looking for Bill, who was chasing a fly and wouldn't stand still. I must get back. I cannot stay. Today is puppy pickup day. While the pup was wondering what he should do, three more were picked up. And then there were two. With grandkids excited who just couldn't wait, we drove to meet up with our fluffy playmate. Grandpa and Carrie were singing a song with Jackson and me clapping along. The pup saw his friend Abra as she came into sight and he knew 
everything would be all right. I must get back. I cannot stay. Today is puppy pickup day. Then they heard giggles from kittens at play. Join us, they all said. It's a beautiful day. I must get back. I cannot stay. Today is puppy pickup day. Follow us to a shortcut, the pup's new friend said. He tried to hold tight, but fell right on his head. The littlest doodle ran back toward the gate. He squeezed under the fence, afraid he was late. I must get back. I cannot stay. Today is puppy pickup day. After a long and bumpy drive, his very own family was last to arrive. Could this new family love a clumsy pup whose legs had trouble keeping up? Who needed help after too many falls? Failed at tug and couldn't catch balls? He worried his family wouldn't like him at all. But he gave them a smile and tried to stand tall. He was dirty and scared and just wanted to hide. But he took a deep breath and he headed outside. Then Bella saw him. Look, here he is. Have you ever seen a face sweeter than his? All dirty said Carrie, making a face. But Nola knew how to remove every trace. Into the tub, our puppy was plunged. Off came the grass and the mud with a sponge. As the dirt and the grime were then washed from his eyes, he clearly saw now that they loved his small size. Puppy pickup day at last was done with a final pat from Nola. Make us proud, little one. Welcome to the family. It's been quite a day. The first of many adventures coming your way. Bears wondering, what do you think Brady's family liked about Brady? Hmm. Do you think his family liked the way Brady walked up to them, stood tall, and gave them a smile? Yes? Well, what did you like about Brady? Some are saying they liked the way Brady made friends with rabbits and kittens. Bear, what did you like? Bear liked the way Brady didn't give up on himself and kept trying to make new friends. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in trying to be friendly. Bye for now. Please subscribe.